What's going on guys? It is Jack. Welcome back to another video. I just wanted to say thank you for all the support on the most recent build videos. I see everybody in the Crazy Cart Modders forum on Facebook going nuts with their new flip ski builds, as well as the charged up 3D builds. I see those coming out too. So I may be releasing a kit in the near future. Um, it's going to be everything that I showcased pretty much just in one ready to go package. That way you don't have to buy and have 10 different packages coming to your house. Maybe. <clears throat> so the purpose of today's video is we're going to be going over how to get the most out of your brushless crazy cart. So if you've just built a brushless crazy cart and you want to know how to get the most out of it, the most torque, the most speed, the most fun, we're going to go over everything in today's video. So we're going to go from hardware, meaning the tires, the headset bearings, your gearing ratio, um, your chain alignment, uh, and your chain as well, because that's important. We're going to talk about the battery, your amp draws, uh, your tune on the VESC, and everything like that. So grab a cup of coffee. Let's get started. So to begin, right, when you're starting these modifications, you're going to want to keep in mind that you're adding a significant amount of speed to these carts. They were originally not designed <clears throat> to be going 40 plus miles an hour. When you throw a brushless build on like we're building and doing to these carts, you have the capabilities to get them up to close to 50 miles an hour, which is just nutty. Um, depending how you build it, it's crazy. Literally, no pun intended there, it's pretty crazy. So what you're gonna wanna do is before you even think about doing the brushless mod, or you're gonna probably wanna do these things in tandem while you do the brushless mod. That way you have the best experience. And so those things are going to be, one, getting a better tire. So the tire that comes on the crazy cart is a pneumatic or an air-filled tire, and it has a very thin tread wall. It burns out pretty quickly, and it is susceptible to heat. So the faster you're going, the quicker it's gonna wear out. So with that being said, I would definitely recommend going with a solid tire. And this is where it gets a little confusing. Um, you can get a solid nylon tire, which is more of a hard plastic. It's not going to absorb bumps or be as grippy. Or you could get a rubber tire. And the compound of this tire is going to more closely replicate a car tire. And that is going to give you more bump absorption and it's also gonna give you better grip, and it's gonna be less susceptible to heat, which means it's going to ultimately last longer. And that's important when we're going 40 miles an hour because we don't want our tire to explode, and that is the only thing that is transfer transferring the energy from our motor to the ground. So if you don't have a good tire, you're not gonna have a good experience. So start with the tire, get a good rubber solid tire. I'll have two options that I like in the description below. Um, this is one that I haven't actually tested yet. It's a solid rubber tire. It's super malleable. Um, I don't know how the balance is on it, so we'll have to give it a try. But yeah, start with a better tire. That's tip number one. Tip number two is going to be your steering wheel. Make sure that your steering wheel is nice and tight, and you're also going to want to make sure that you upgrade the headset bearing. So if you're familiar with bikes or anything like that, the forks on the crazy cart are just like a bike. So the forks on a bike, they have a headset bearing. That way they, they, you can spin the handlebars left and right. On the crazy cart, they have the same thing. So you can spin the steering wheel left and right. The one from the factory isn't the best, and it definitely should be upgraded if you're going 40 miles an hour. Keep that in mind. You're going 40 miles an hour on a tiny little cart. So you want to have the most robust parts on this thing as possible. So there's quite a few options out there when you're picking the headset bearing, but the cheapest and pretty reliable option you can get off of Amazon, and I'll have that linked in the description below. Uh, it's, I think, $15 or $20. Not too hard to install. You do have to cut the... When you're taking the original headset bearing out, there is a race bearing, they call it. It's not a race, but... It, Basically, the inner portion of the bearing usually will get stuck inside the fork, and you have to get that out. That's the hardest part. Once you get that out, putting the new one in is super easy. 
and it increases the ride quality significantly. You don't get speed wobbles. Uh, it's not super hard to turn the steering wheel like with the original headset bearing. If you tighten that Allen key, it'll be really hard to turn the steering wheel. With this upgraded Allen, uh, with this upgraded headset, you can tighten that Allen key pretty much all the way down until it doesn't move and you'll still have a good amount of movement in the steering wheel and it will feel solid. So those are the two things I'd start with, tires and headset bearings. <clears throat> so once you have a good tire and a good headset bearing, the next thing you're gonna do is get some upgraded casters. So the casters that come on the Crazy Cart are a rollerblade style wheel, very narrow. They're great for drifting, um, even when you don't pull up the drift bar on the on the standard casters and wheels, you can drift. So the downside to that is when you're going 40 miles an hour, you don't wanna be sliding left and right uh, and losing control. So I would definitely recommend going with some upgraded casters, either doing the Apollo caster mod or getting a pair of the casters. I think his name's Ryan on the, the modders forum. He has some really cool engineered custom casters. They're $150, a little expensive but I think it's well worth the money. So you're definitely like, this is a, I wouldn't say a optional upgrade. These are all necessary upgrades. You're gonna wanna do every one of these things. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have upgraded tire, upgraded casters, upgraded headset bearing. And from there, you can feel comfortable adding speed and the brushless setup. So once you purchase all the parts for your brushless setup, when you're purchasing the gears, if you're not just getting a pre-made kit, if you're purchasing each individual part and building it, I highly recommend if you're starting out going with a 15 tooth sprocket for the, for the motor. What that'll do is it'll give you enough low end speed to where you'll be able to get going if you're a little bit heavier. If you're upwards of 160 to 180 pounds, I would go with that 15 tooth sprocket so that way you have some low end grunt. You can keep the original sprocket on the crazy cart on the wheel. That's a 55 tooth sprocket. Um, and that'll get you to right around 36, 38 miles an hour with a 48 volt battery, keep in mind. So we'll get more into batteries in a little bit. If you put a 47 tooth sprocket on the wheel, you'll probably get up to around 41, 45 miles an hour. So with all that in mind, your gearing ratio plays a huge role into how fast you're gonna go and how much torque you're gonna to have. I don't have much experience playing around with different gearing ratios. Both my carts are running a 15 tooth upper sprocket and a 55 tooth lower sprocket. I really like the way that drives and feels. You can throw a 47 tooth sprocket on the wheel to get a little bit more top end. Um, you'll lose a little bit of torque on the lower end, but it won't be significant. So you wanna make sure that your gearing ratio is correct and appropriate for the riding style that you want. If you want a lot of top end, um, you can actually drop your motor sprocket to a 10 tooth and your wheel sprocket to a 47 tooth, and that'll probably get you upwards of 50, 50 miles an hour. What you want to keep in mind too is gearing ratios also play a role into motor temp. So if you have a higher gearing ratio, it's going to be working the motor a little bit harder. So you will have a higher motor temp. If you have a lower gearing ratio, the motor is not going to work as hard to spin it once it's going, but you won't have as much low end torque. So keep that in mind that you might not have enough grunt to get going from a standstill with those lower gearing ratios. Keep that in mind. The other thing, once you have all this stuff, is your chain. Uh, your chain alignment is huge. You wanna make sure that your chain is in a straight line from the top sprocket to the bottom sprocket because you want an even transfer of energy from the motor to the wheel. And you wanna make sure you're using a heavy duty chain. So there's a difference. There's a standard roller chain and then there's a heavy duty roller chain which is significantly thicker and made for higher speeds. Make sure you're using a number 25 heavy duty chain, or if you're using an XL cart, I think it's a number 35 chain, just heavy duty. So make sure you get a heavy duty chain. Really important, that way you don't go flying down the road and have your chain come flying off. So now that we've covered all the hardware aspects of a brushless cart that you want to have upgraded before you move in to doing any of the actual tuning, you're gonna need a battery that can supply enough power to this build. 
And so this is something that I've seen a lot of talk about recently, and it's something I wanted to cover. So I'm using, on my current setup, lead acid batteries. Now that is the worst case scenario. You do not want to be using lead acid batteries for many reasons. One, they don't supply enough amps that this build will need. Two, the capacity is very small, so you only get maybe about 30 minutes of runtime on these batteries. Um, and they're just big and bulky, so you don't really, and they're heavy. So if you're using lead acid, you can, as long as you're running a 48 volt lead acid battery, it will supply enough amps, it'll supply enough power to get these carts up to 36, 40 miles an hour roughly. You're just gonna not have a lot of runtime because these motors draw a lot of amps, and so that'll kill these batteries pretty quick. If you're running a lithium ion battery or a lithium polymer battery, you're gonna wanna keep in mind that your capacity of the battery is what's going to give you the most amount of runtime. So if you have a 10 amp hour battery, you'll get more runtime than you would out of a five amp hour battery, obviously, right? Just makes logical sense. What seems to confuse a lot of people is the amount of amps you can pull out of the battery or the discharge rate of the battery. So when you're dealing with lithium ion, a lot of the times these batteries will have multiple cells, upwards of 50, 18650 cells to make a 48 volt or a 60 volt battery. So with those 60 cells, they need to have a BMS or a battery management system to basically manage the power coming from each one of those cells for charging, discharging, just to keep the battery healthy. That way you don't have one cell over discharge or one cell overcharge. And so these battery management systems, a lot of the times are only rated for 20, 10, 30 amps max discharge rate. And what that means is when you're pulling 30 amps from that battery, the battery management system will cut off the amp draw at 30 amps. So you can't pull more than 30 amps. So a lot of people will run into issues where they're not going to be able to supply enough power to the cart due to that battery management system. So when you're picking a battery, it's really important to pick a battery that can supply enough amps to your cart. Um, these lead acid batteries don't have any battery management system. So whatever my controller asks for, the batteries will give it whatever it can. It'll pull, it'll, it's ruining the batteries, right? It's not good for my batteries to be pulling upwards of 60 amps. But since there's no battery management system controlling that, it's gonna take it from the batteries. That's a different, it's different when you're dealing with lithium ion because you have those battery management systems. So what you can do is you can bypass the discharge on the battery management systems, but I don't recommend that for a lot of people because that's, that involves rewiring a battery. So if you're just getting started, I would highly recommend using a 48 volt lead acid battery. It's the simplest, easiest thing to do, cheapest. You can get them off of Amazon. You can wire it up in a 30 minutes and be riding in an hour type thing. I am working on a lithium ion battery pack that the build will be, you know, I'm gonna show you guys how to build it. I'm gonna supply all the parts to you in a build list and I'll let you guys have all the, all the knowledge on how to do it. But ultimately I feel like a lot of you guys are just gonna want a battery pack to purchase. So I might pre-make some battery packs and have them available for sale. And these battery packs will be able to supply plenty of power to the carts. Um, so yeah. That's pretty much it for batteries. The other thing is connectors and wires, right? On these batteries, you wanna make sure you're using a thick enough gauge wire on the, the battery itself. That way there's no bottlenecks when you're connecting it to the, v, the VESC controller. So I use an XT90, which is rated for 90 amps because my motor is rated for 90 amps. So you wanna make sure everything's matching. So if you're using a, the stock connector for your crazy cart on a brushless build, no bueno, don't do it. It's not rated for 60 amps and it's just gonna be a bottleneck. It's gonna heat up and over time it could melt. So don't do it. Um, the last thing we're gonna get into, which I'm gonna to have to pause this video here because I only got four minutes left of recording is we're gonna go over the tuning of the VESC. So this is a long video, but it's all good information that you should know before getting into this. 
So let's pause here for a second. I'm going to clear some space on this card, and then we'll jump into the tuning of the Basque controller. All right, so real quick, what we're going to do is run through my Vesk settings on my cart. This one goes 45 miles an hour. This is my crazy cart build, as, I, as you will. It's on a 15 tooth upper sprocket and a 40 or 55 lower sprocket. So I'll show you, I can't even speak, I'll show you my settings. Um, so let's click connect. And so it's going to say this firmware is out of date, but mostly compatible. I haven't updated the firmware, haven't had any issues. So the first thing we're gonna run over to is your motor config. Keep the first one as general and the second drop down. Oops, I'm not even recording on my screen. So once you're inside your VESC app, you're gonna to wanna to slide over to motor config and that's just by sliding to the left and you'll see motor config here. Leave the first menu as general and the second drop down at the top. We're going to put as we're going to put this as our voltage. And so what this is showing you is your battery voltage settings. I'm using a lead acid battery, so I have my voltage cut off start at 40 volts, my battery voltage cut off end at 38 volts, and my battery filter constant at 45. From voltage, we're going to go to the current. This is where you can see your motor current settings. I have my motor current at 65 amps, my motor brake max current at 20 amps, my absolute maximum current at 180 amps, and as we scroll down to the battery section, I have my battery current max at 30 amps. Your battery current max will always be equal to or lower than your motor current max, keep that in mind. My battery current max regen is five amps. And moving on from current, we're gonna go to our wattage settings. I have my wattage at 2,500 watts. Uh, that's plenty of power. And we're gonna then go to our, after that, we're gonna go, so in the first you see general here, so instead of general, we're gonna put it on FOC, and then in the second drop down menu, we're gonna go down to field weakening. So I have my field weakening current max set to 60 amps, my field weakening duty cycle start at 90%, and from there, we're gonna to go to our app config, so we're gonna to swipe to the left, go to the menu to the left, or to the right, rather, but we're swiping to the left. You're then going to go to your, um, we're going to go to, where is it? You're going to go to ADC, and then you're going to go to throttle curve. And I like running an exponential throttle curve. It's more linear, so you, it starts at zero. And when you're fully depressed, it's always going to be at 100. Comes stock, polynomial. I like exponential. You can also add a throttle curve in there. Um, and let's see, you can also do, so, yep. So we're gonna go to mapping here, general, and that's about it. Those are all the settings I've adjusted. Yeah, that's about it. Tune modifiers, you can, I haven't messed with any of these yet. And I believe these are all for like one wheel type builds. So that pretty much is gonna wrap up this video. Again, it's awesome seeing everybody build their custom builds, their custom brushless builds. If you have any questions, make sure to join the Crazy Cart Modders Forum on Facebook, as well as drop your questions in the comments down below. I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability. Until next time, guys, I'll see you out there riding your carts.